shocking discoveries. The genetic origins of ancient China and Japan uncovered. In the records of human history, the lands of ancient China and Japan have been shrouded in mystery, their origins steeped in legend and lore. However, recent breakthroughs in genetic research have begun to unravel the secrets of these ancient civilizations, uncovering startling revelations about the peoples who once inhabited these lands. Join us on a journey through time as we delve into the genetic origins of ancient China and Japan, exploring the discoveries that are reshaping our understanding of East Asian history. Our exploration begins in the cradle of the Chinese civilization, where the past speaks volumes through the twists and turns of DNA. Picture this, a groundbreaking study involving the analysis of 26 ancient genomes from various regions across China. These ancient genetic codes, freshly decoded, serve as windows into the past, unlocking tales of yore and providing invaluable insights into the lives of our ancestors. Amidst this treasure trove of genetic information, one revelation shines brightly. The story of the Han people. So, who were the Han people, you ask? Well, they were one of China's major ethnic groups who were known for their significant contributions to Chinese culture and history during 206 BCE to 220 CE. But here's the twist. They weren't the first players in town. Before the Han Dynasty, there were a variety of diverse ancient populations shaping the genetic makeup of China. But where did these original settlers come from? That's the million dollar question. By delving into their genetic codes, researchers are uncovering clues about their origins and migrations, painting a richer picture of China's ancient past. Tens of thousands of years ago, during the Stone Age, our Paleolithic ancestors began their epic migration out of Africa, trekking across vast expanses of land and eventually reaching the fertile river valleys of East Asia. Among these courageous travelers were the earliest known inhabitants of China, the Paleolithic hunter-gatherers. These early pioneers didn't have Google Maps to guide them, but they had something even more powerful, a deep-seated drive to explore and thrive in new environments. From the grasslands of the north to the lush subtropical forest of the south, they traversed diverse landscapes, adapting their lifestyles to suit their surroundings. Imagine them hunting game, foraging for wild plants, and fashioning basic tools from stone and bone to navigate their ever-changing world. It's like a real-life survival adventure played out over thousands of years. As time passed, these hunter-gatherer communities didn't just survive, they thrived. They developed unique cultural traditions, forged social bonds, and laid the groundwork for the vibrant tapestry of human diversity that would come to define ancient China. Among these were the Proto-Sino-Tibetan peoples, who originated in the Yellow River Basin and spread southward, bringing with them innovations in agriculture and animal husbandry. They were like trailblazers, paving the way for new settlements and cultural advancements. Meanwhile, in the vast expanses of the north, nomadic shepherds from the Eurasian steppes, including the ancestors of the Xiongnu and Xiongbei tribes, established powerful empires and forged extensive trade networks that ran across the continent. These nomadic groups weren't just wandering tribes, they were architects of mighty realms, shaping the destiny of ancient China through their influence and interactions. And let's not forget about the south, where the ancient Bayou people thrived in the subtropical regions of modern-day southern China. Masters of the seas, they navigated intricate maritime trade routes and built bustling port cities along the coast. Their legacy of seafaring prowess and artistic brilliance lives on in the intricate bronze artifacts and exquisite jade carvings they left behind. As these diverse populations coexisted and mingled, they exchanged not only goods and ideas, but also their very essence, genes that blended and intertwined, creating a rich mosaic of genetic diversity across ancient China. Dynasties rose and fell, migrations ebbed and flowed, and cultures merged and evolved, all contributing to the vibrant tapestry of humanity that defines the Chinese people today. But hold on to your hat, because this story has another twist. As the Ice Age ebbed and flowed, so too did the movement of ancient peoples across the vast expanse of East Asia. 
new research spills the beans on some fascinating Ice Age human migrations. Picture this, a maternal lineage stretching from northern coastal China all the way to Japan. Yeah, mind-blowing stuff, right? It turns out that the two major migration events occurred during the last Ice Age and the following melting period, roughly between 19,000 and 11,500 years ago. This groundbreaking discovery isn't just shaking up our understanding of human migration, it's painting a picture of ancient peoples making connections across continents and oceans. And get this, these ancient migrations didn't just stop at Japan's doorstep, nope, they kept on trucking all the way to the Americas. Some of the very same people who settled in Japan during those migrations also made their way to the Americas, kickstarting some of the first human communities on those shores. It's like a trans-Pacific journey that links distant lands in ways we never imagined. But our adventure doesn't stop there. Our compass points us further across the crystal clear waters to the enchanting islands of Japan. Here, amidst misty landscapes straight out of a fairy tale, a whole new chapter of East Asian history unfolds. A story of living in sync with nature, channeling artistic expression, and evolving cultures. For thousands upon thousands of years, the people of Japan lived hand in hand with the land, sculpting not just pottery and tools, but a way of life that honored their deep bond with the natural world. Recent genetic studies have really opened up Pandora's box of ancient Japan's ancestry, giving us fresh insights into the genetic origins of the Japanese people. Scientists have been hard at work analyzing ancient DNA extracted from Jaman archaeological sites and what they found is nothing short of mind-blowing. This groundbreaking research has shown us that the story of Japan's genetic makeup isn't as simple as we once thought. It turns out that the ancestors of modern Japanese folks didn't just arrive in two neat groups, they actually came in three distinct waves, each leaving its mark on the island's genetic landscape. From the hunter-gatherers of the Jomon period, who were the OG inhabitants of the land, to the farmers of the Yayoi period, who brought new technologies and ways of life, and finally, to the migrants of the Kofun period, who added yet another layer to Japan's genetic mix. Ancient Japan was a melting pot of diverse ancestral populations. The Jomon people were the earliest known inhabitants of Japan, living during the Jomon period, which lasted from around 14,000 to 300 BCE. They were named after the distinctive cord-marked pottery they created, known as Jomon ware. These early hunter-gatherers were well adapted to the diverse environments of ancient Japan, ranging from coastal areas to mountainous regions. They relied on hunting, fishing, and gathering wild plants for survival, and their society was characterized by small, semi-sedentary communities. Then, around 300 BCE, things got a bit more interesting with the Yayoi period. These people rolled in from the Korean Peninsula and China, bringing some serious farming games with them. We're talking wet rice farming, bronze and iron tools, and fancy pottery wheels. This was a game changer for Japan, leading to permanent settlements, a bit of social hierarchy, and some fancy political structures. Fast forward to the Kofun period, roughly 250 to 538 CE, and you've got yourself a real turning point in Japanese history. This era is all about those massive burial mounds known as Kofun, and they weren't just your run-of-the-mill graves. Nope, these bad boys were loaded with all sorts of extravagant burial goods, indicating the status and wealth of the deceased. Picture this, towering mounds of earth, sometimes stretching over 400 meters long, serving as the final resting place for Japan's elite. And what's inside? Well, think along the lines of precious metals, elaborate jewelry, finely crafted weapons, and even miniature replicas of houses and animals. It's like they were preparing for the afterlife in style. But these Kofun weren't just lavish tombs, they were also symbols of power and authority. The larger the mound, the greater the prestige of the person buried within. Now, let's talk about the cultural scene during the Kofun period. Japan was getting cozy with its neighbors, especially the Korean Peninsula and China. It was like a cultural potluck, with Japan picking up bits and pieces of their traditions and technologies. From China, Japan snagged some seriously game-changing ideas like Buddhism and Chinese writing systems. This influx of new ideas and belief shook up Japanese society, leading to the spread of Buddhism across the islands and the adoption of Chinese characters for writing. And let's not forget about Korea, which brought its own flavor to the mix. 
the influence of Korean culture during the Kofun period can be seen in everything from pottery styles to architectural techniques, further enriching Japan's cultural landscape. So, you see, Japan's history is like a wild ride through a melting pot of different influences, with each wave of migration and cultural exchange leaving its mark on the land and its people. And that's how we ended up with the diverse and vibrant Japanese society we know and love today. Well, that wraps up today's video journey through the ancient genetic origins of China and Japan. If you enjoyed this exploration into the depths of history, don't forget to hit the like button, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe to History Spotlight for more captivating content on the mysteries of our past. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay curious, stay engaged.